He's got like a, almost like an old man. I agree. There, there's certain songs that fit his voice. Yeah. That's been all the same. When I used to go to him this back, we had a guy that he was like that barber quartet voice, and I love hearing him. But you can understand better. Yeah, really, and he's, if he sings a song that I've heard of, yeah. and I don't know what's coming, I, yeah. I can understand about half the word. If he sings a song that I don't know, I might yeah. like, get yeah, That's right, too. They don't mess around. Those two girls, yeah, they don't mess around. Yeah. This is his granddaughter. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the one it, that sings, the, yeah. Yeah, the, one that sings uh, the, the red-headed girl, that's the old, his oldest granddaughter. I guess it's the oldest granddaughter. Since I carries out, <laughs> yeah, she her, it carries really well. I agree. She's got such a spiritual glow about her. Right. Uh, when uh, when I was here before, I thought that I read about the judge. I, I thought she was probably not safe. You know? yeah. Since I came back, she's got you know, really grown spiritually. Well, she's uh, she's had a birthday here about six months. Ago. She's had a his daughter, that's his daughter. I think that she's got eight kids. Uh, eight kids. I raised one boy, and I'll tell you what, sometimes that was a handhold. Yeah, every side of those boys didn't have any sisters. My son's 42, and he's in South Indiana, uh -huh. uh -huh. but he was about 15. My wife was going through a room and cleaning, and she knows his dog. No water yet, bro. He was sticking out of all the papers. So she got it, bro. Thank you. 
State Fellowship meeting is Friday. We'll be leaving here, you said, at 2 o'clock? 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. And that's... Uh, how many of you planning on going? Raise your hand. How many of you planning on, you plan on going with us at uh, 2 o'clock on Friday to the Tri-State Baptist Fellowship? One, two, three, four, five. Five and ten, six. Oh, and that's, man, that's a go hey, we've got several others coming, too. Arthur, Dorothy are going with us. Brother Charlie. And Brother Charlie and... Uh, and uh, Nathan. Nathan, yeah. So they are being sent in my God. So, Amen. Yeah. So be praying about that. Amen. Amen. And uh, remember, uh, men, uh, the Saturday morning prayer meeting at 9 a.m. Try to come out for that. And I believe the time changes this weekend. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Saturday. Not really. Saturday. Fall back an hour. It starts at 5 o'clock. Amen. So try to remember that. Amen. 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 If you forget, you'll just show up an hour early. I always had a family sitting back there and, and they give me out early. And I, she got all early, huh? Yeah. That went back. <laughs> <laughs> they never did come early before, but I get them every year like that. Amen. All right, let's have Brother Mike back up. He leaves in our congregation and then we'll take up the offer. Amen. All right, let's get our red hymnals once again. Stand if you're able. Page 397. 397. Little is much when God is in it. That's a true statement. Amen.
God, 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 God for the offering you give, amen. amen. And uh, God will richly bless you. Brother Scott Regal wants you to lead us in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for another privilege come to us, Lord, that we have, Lord, to come and meet with you again this morning and this evening, Lord. I pray, Lord, you just bless us all, pray, Lord, use us to return to the kingdom and help preach as he brings us back. Oh, God. Help the Lord have every part of the church and our church. Yes, yes Lord. 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 Lord, for some here tonight, Lord, it's unsaved, Lord, not the Lord, our salvation for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You sing it. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
I like to pray for those handfuls of purpose. Yes. Amen. God will give them to you. Ask him. He said, you have not because you ask not. That asking is praying. Amen. I just wonder how many how many minutes a day each one of us pray. I wonder how much time we take any time out for prayer. Now, you know there's no excuse for not praying. But you can take time out and drink a cup of coffee. You can take time out to watch the news. You can take time out to even scratch, scratch your face, read your arm, read your leg, or to do this or that. They mean, primp on yourself in front of the mirror. Everybody does that. You want to look the best you can look when you come to church. For heaven's sake, always make a little time for the Lord and pray. Mm -hmm. He'll bless you, brother. I promise you. Yes. Amen. All right, we're in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, starting the, new, the last chapter. For this uh, this study here in, in Corinthians, the last chapter, Second uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen, thirteen. You got your Bibles there? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you once again, Lord. We bless your holy name tonight, dear Lord, for being so good to us. We are so unworthy. Only through the blood of Jesus are we worthy of anything. Yes. God, we're so thankful for that. Thank you, God, for the blood on the cross, dear Lord. Lord. And for our Savior dying for us, taking our place on the cross and dying for us, Lord. Oh, God, tonight, as we look into your holy word, we pray that you lead, guide, and direct. And we'll give you the praise for the entire outcome of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Second Corinthians chapter 13. And let's. Let's begin reading. Let's begin reading verse one there. Let's go to verse one. He said, "This is the third time I am coming to you, Paul. So I've been gone three times. I'm coming to you." He said, "In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Every word be established." Now, now I wrote down here on the first point of the night in, in chapter thirteen, verse one: the establishing, the establishing of the word of God. The establishing of the word of God. Now, to establish a Bible doctrine, there must be two or three verses of scripture, amen, to back that up. And that's a witness, amen, which are within, which are witnesses to the truth. These scriptures are witness to the truth right. of what you're trying to prove, doctrinal lies, right. amen? amen. And in a, uh, uh, to establish a, uh, 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 a Bible doctrine, that's what we gotta do. Now, in a court of, of law, there must be witnesses to convict. Mm -hmm. Stay with me now. You've got to have witnesses to convict. You take some, you take something for the court, and you ain't got the one witness you ain't gonna do anything with. They'll throw it out. You gotta have you gotta have uh, uh, witnesses, two or three witnesses to convict someone for a crime or a murder or whatever. So then, one verse of scripture will not establish a correct doctrine. You get what I'm saying now? Right. One yeah. verse of scripture will not uh, will not. Uh, establish a, a correct doctrine and they are they have tried to do that in different churches right church christ one of them i'll just figure right out like i think they tell you if you're not if you're not baptized you're not going to heaven mm -hmm. that's a lie but you have to have the gospel death burial and resurrection that's exactly. three witnesses right amen yeah death of jesus one witness burial is one witness and re to raise be raised again the third witness you got to have that mm -hmm. that's the gospel yeah. death burial and resurrection yeah, amen mm -hmm. amen right and in a court of law, there must be witnesses to commit. So then one verse of scripture will not establish a correct doctrine. Mm -hmm. It will not establish correct doctrine. Now they, they have, they got the, what's it, Acts 2.38, is that it? That's all they talk about, Acts 2.38. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't know anything else, Acts 2.38. Right. You must be, be baptized and, you know, and, uh, and uh, how's that go? Uh, how's that go? So, he that is saved and baptized. He that saved and baptized. That, 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 that's 238. All right, anyway. I think they, uh, anyway, they, they say you've got baptism is the most important thing. The blood is the most important thing. Exactly. Not shedding the blood, there is no remission of sin. The right. Bible. Amen. Amen. So that establishes that. Amen. But one verse will not establish the correct doctrine. I wonder if you if you were tried for being a Christian today, one of you, one of us, let me say us, one of us. If one of us were tried, put on trial for being a Christian. Would there be enough evidence to convict you? Mm -hmm. Think of that. Would there be enough evidence to convict you? Now, it takes three scriptures to uh, to set to uh, make a doctrine. So it take uh, to establish your salvation. It would take uh, it would take three uh, three witnesses to establish your salvation. Amen. 
That's right. So, but well, listen, what Deuteronomy 17, verse 6 says, a little bit like I thought, at the mouth of two witnesses, or three, said, uh, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. At the mouth of two or three witnesses. But at least two. Not one. One can't do it. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. Right. So, a lot of the same like I told you, when we get saved, don't we die to sin? Right? And we die in his likeness, don't we? He died for us. When he died for us, it's just good we hung on the cross with him. Mm -hmm. I said that many times. It's truth. This is, he died for you and I. He took upon him the sins of the world from the beginning of time to the end and died on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood. You listening to me? And so he, and that was just as good as us, being on the cross with him. Once we can repent of our sins and, and put our faith in his shed blood and born into the family of God. We have died to our sin. So it says here, uh, uh, we just now read uh, that uh, he said, uh, but at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. But at the mouth of two or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy be put to death. Now those witnesses of the gospel, we said. You got, you got to go, you've got to go to Calvary with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You must go to Calvary. You've got to die to your sins. Right. You've got to. Amen. And once you die to those sins, then you should have evidences. Yeah. When you've got witnesses, you have evidence, don't you? That's right. In a court of law, you have evidence. I'll guarantee you, in the courts of heaven, you have to have evidence. Mm -hmm. Now, how many times have I said, how many times have I said that Jesus said, you shall know them by, come on. Their fruit. That's right. That's how you're going to know them. So you're going to have to have, you're going to have to have uh, fruits. You're going to have to have some fruit. Fruits means evidence. Like I've talked many times. You go to the orchard, you get an apple, uh, apple, you don't go to the peach tree. You go to the apple tree. If you go to get some grapes, you go. You don't go to a, a, a apple tree, you go to a grapevine. You see? And that, that, and that is evidence that that's a grapevine. That's evidence that that's an apple tree. Evidence that's a peach tree. And so these things that God wants us to be doing, these evidences, amen, going to church, being a witness, giving a tithe and offerings to the Lord. Yeah. Witnessing to people, doing things that meet for uh, for uh, uh, salvation, amen. And putting on the Lord like you need to. Let him speak through you. Let him use you. Mm. Let God walk in you and talk in you, amen. And you'll have the evidences that you have died, the evidences that you have been put to death, and you've died to sin. You've been born again. There you go. salvation, amen. amen. Right. And so that, that's the witnesses right there that we're seeing here. Paul's talking about here. He said there in our, our text, he said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. There in, in uh, chapter 13 and verse 1. Amen. Now I believe also what Paul's saying here in verse 2. In verse 2, look at verse 2. He said, I told you before and foretell you as if I were present. The second time. Being absent now, I'll write to them which you're to, you're to for and sin and to all others. If I come again, I will not spare. Mm -hmm. Man, you get rough, ain't you? <laughs> I'm not going to spare your feelings. That's right. I'm not. No, sir. I'm not going to spare you. What Paul's saying here in, in so many words in verse 2 is when I come, get ready. I'm not pulling any punches. Right. That's it, brother. You know, when you pay pull punches, uh, they, they use that term in boxing, you know. Uh, they'll pull that punch. They'll, hit, they'll pull them back. They won't, they won't throw it. Just pull them, pull them back. It's pulling punches. You don't hurt the box that way. Pull them. Pull them. Don't pull them punches. Bam! Let them land. Yeah. Them, that's what I do. I let them land. Yeah. I don't pull punches. Mm -hmm. I do not. I'm going to preach on something. I'll preach on it. Come hell or high water. I don't care. Yes, sir. God called me to preach. Amen. 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 Right. Told me to tell it like it is. That's give me 66 it. books of the Bible to preach. Give me the Holy Ghost to lead me and direct me and give me the power, the inward power that I need to preach the Word of God. I'm sure I'm going to let God down. Uh -huh. But He said, I'm not pulling punches this time when I come. It's the third time He's been there with them. He's dealt with them. Right. That's how He feels. How many times have you went to talk to somebody? About the third or fourth time. Can you tell them the same thing? Going up. You need to get in church. You need to live for God. You need to. Show Jesus in your life. You need to not get mixed up in the world. Stay out of these worldly places. Don't run with this worldly bunch. How many of y'all have done that with people? Oh my God, I had 40 years, the eighth of this month, 40, 40 years as a pastor. But I, I, I did seven or eight years before that 
I was just a layman, a lay preacher and so forth. I preached here and there and everywhere. And then I, God called me to pastor. And I, I, I was going to hang into the ministry, amen. But I pulled a lot of punches and, and I talked to people and been easy with them. But Paul said, I, I, I'm not, I don't care this time, I'm going to get with him. Amen. I'm going to get with the program. Now, I believe in, in this fight in the pulpit today, there's a lot of preachers pulling their punches. They're not really letting them land with a thud. They're not, they're not throwing real good hard punches, amen, good gospel punches. Amen. Like old Billy Sunday of old would preach. Right. There Man, you he'd preach. And, that arm right there like that, boy, he'd preach. <laughs> That's right. Tell him. He'd tell him, give him some clothes on. Stay out of the bars. Get right with God. Get in church. Serve the Lord. Live for God. Your days are coming. You're going to be out of here. It's going to be long. So live for God. Amen. Amen. That's what we need to do. Right. He said, oh, that scares people. That's what we want to do. They need to be scared. My God, who wouldn't be scared if they find the truth? If they're given the truth, if they don't get saved and get around with God, they're going to hell and burn eternally. Right. Now, who in the world is not going to get scared of that? Yes, sir, brother. You better get scared. It's true. It's going to happen. Oh, yeah. And I'm telling you what I said the other night about those two, two, uh, two signs that the Lord gave us. Days of Lot and days of Noah. My God, they're here, honey. They're right here now. They're here right now. The whole section, we're taking over everything. That's what they did in Sodom. They had Sodom, didn't they? If you read your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. They had Sodom, and they had it. They took over Sodom. And God uh, destroyed that thing, buddy. I mean, he burnt that thing about a foot and a half down the ground. You go over there to the Dead Sea site right now and dig out. It looks like coal where God burnt that site. Yeah. That town burned up. Yeah. So it's going to be like that. It's here. It's here. It's here. Did you ever thought when you were younger that you'd ever hear tell the man marrying a man and the woman marrying a woman? No, sir. Did you ever, hear, did you ever think about that? Mm -mm. I don't reckon that. A either. man kissing a big old, a big whiskery face man? <laughs> That's why God made women so soft and pretty and everything for a man. He didn't make an old hairy man for a man. <laughs> He made a whoa man. That's how she got her name. When Adam saw her, he said, Whoa man. Good thought, amen. I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's a lot of preachers pulling her punches. They won't they won't name sin. Mm -hmm. They would I had a guy tell me, Well, you keep preaching like that. You'll never never have a big church. I said, Well, I'll just never have a big church. I'm not gonna compromise. Amen. I don't get up here and he haul around not preach anything and convict the people when they need convicting. Amen. Y'all wouldn't get anything from him. If suddenly I just start preaching lovey dovey stuff. <laughs> never really, never really uh, chomp on your thorn mm -hmm. Amen. Rattling your door doorknob. Mm -hmm. uh, open up your window. Stick my head in. I mean, if I didn't really preach the way I preached, do you think you'd get my child out of What was it? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Blackmore. She, she told me back here, she said, I thought it's about time I come to her some real hard preaching. I need it. I said, well, you're going to get it. I said, I feel like preaching today. Amen. Amen. The people do. They get along with hard preaching. Sure. Something that'll help them. Mm. But we're in a body of sinful flesh. Yeah. Every one of us are. We need to be preached hard today. We yeah. do. To keep us under control, you've got to be preached to. I have to be preached to. That's why I go to fellowship meetings mm -hmm. and revival meetings and, and camp, camp meetings and get preached to. Mm -hmm. So I frequent the altar just like you do. Amen. I can't hear. I can step here and preach to you while you're on the altar. Right. Talk to you, compel you to come. But somebody else is really preaching. Well, me a bit to go to the altar. It's something right with God. Amen. Get closer to God. If you ain't got anything that you think is bad, if you need to get down the blood, get, get forgiveness, then... Uh, then at least come and ask God to make you a, a better a soul winner. Right. Amen. Right. Make you a better witness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now fill your house full of gladness and, and comfort. And, amen. And the presence of the Lord in your home. Oh, it makes all the difference, don't it? Yeah. Right, just a couple of people come by and fellowship. It makes your house light up, don't it? Amen. It does. Look, Travis was up on the other night. was talking about that, wasn't we? How just having a bunch of a bunch of Christian men, Christian women, young people just come together and have a have a little back eat or something together, laugh and cut up like that. That's the fellowship of the saints. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Watch well, out, I love that. I do. I really do. Amen. Look here what uh, Hebrews 13 and verse 17 tells us. He said, Obey them that have the rule over you. It's just all what Paul's getting at here. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. Now listen close to this. 
and submit yourself. Now, you are subject to this if you're a child of God. Mm -hmm. Now, the world's not subject to this, right? But the world, the only thing in that for the world is the plan of salvation. That's all it all's in that Bible for the world. This is written 66 books for the child of God. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Amen. Submit yourself or they watch for your souls. He's talking about the pastor here. As they that must give account. Right. Uh, or the church, uh, see, they must give one more about here. They that must give account. Uh, damn, I'm not wrong that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Mm -hmm. Not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Talk about the pastor. Submit yourself to the pastor. And that word submit, I looked at the uh, that word there here in Hebrews 13, verse 17. And I looked in the Webster's 1828 dictionary on that word submit. And it, it defines it as surrendering and yielding. Right. Now we're going to get into something here, boy. You listen. Hang on. Mm. Amen. Surrendering and yielding. In Ephesians 5, 22, the Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Or unto the or as unto the Lord. Submit yourself to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we're to submit to the Lord. You're to submit to your husband as unto the Lord. Amen. Why? Because you're married. You're married to he's your husband. You've been tied together through marriage. And when you get saved, you're the bride of Christ. You're married to Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're to be submitted to him. Amen. And you submit yourself to your husband just like you submit yourself to, to Jesus. You're, uh, uh, you're uh, your husband's bride and we all together are the bride of Christ. He's a husband. The Bible calls him the husbandman and you and I are the husbandry. And that word husbandman means a farmer. And that word husbandry means a farm. So the Lord actually farms us. Huh? He lives in us. You can't bring forth fruit without him, can you, Travis? Is he not farming? Is he not doing the work in the orchard? Mm. That's farming. <laughs> That's good, brother. Amen, son. Yes, That's right. Praise yeah. God. So we're we'll submit to that. Yeah. Because we're the we're the bride of Christ. Mm. He's our husband. Yep. He works in us. That's why Jesus said, Without me, you can't do nothing. Yeah, man. Yeah, right. Without a husband, you can't do anything either. This having children, you know. The proxy sure ain't right. You know that. Come on, wake up out there. It's not right. God didn't mean that man shall feed with his wife and they claim shall be one flesh. And, and marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled but whoremongers and the dovers God will judge. That's the way it's set straight right there in the Bible. It's the same way with you and I with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. What fellas we do? He's our, he's our husband. We're his husband, we're his farm, we're his wife. Mm -hmm. And he had the right to say, without me, you can do nothing. You right. can't, you can't do a thing without the Lord. Mm -hmm. These old, some of these old liberal Bible colleges not to turn out supposedly preachers, they can't preach some uh, 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 wings on my neck. Mm -hmm. They can't. They have no spirit on them. I don't think they're saved, most of them. Right. It's a bunch of garden. Turn that over on that channel there on that old Joyce Meyer that there. Flaunting herself, that old thing. She ain't no preacher. <laughs> I doubt she's even saved. There's a good saved woman would dare to set herself up as a preacher. Would you, right. ladies, you dare set yourself up as a preacher, Aunt? Amen, bro. Preacher. No. There's lost people do that, Travis. Right. <laughs> Paul, you know, my head, the Bible says it's no big thing. It says Satan's minister, uh, Satan calls ministers, and his ministers can be called ministers of righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, and Satan calls them, and the devil calls preachers. Yeah. Paul said there in Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Man, man, I'm going to slow down here. <laughs> so he said, Wives, you submit yourself to your own husband as unto the Lord, as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then we go on down here. <clears throat> Going down here and uh, <clears throat> let me see where I'm at here. Lost my map. In verse 30. 
He said, since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you is not weak, they want to they want some proof that, that he actually had the spirit in yeah. That it was Christ doing the work. They, they want actually, he said, since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me or speaking through me, uh, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. It's mighty in you if you, 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 you did that. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Amen? So here, in verse 3 and 4, you and I will get nowhere without the power of Christ in us. Paul is going to get this right here. But nowhere at all without the power of Christ in us. See if I can see if I can illustrate that the best I can. But listen, you got an automobile, you got a pickup truck, to drive. how would you get anywhere without your vehicle? Yeah? It's a, I mean I can remember when I grew up down in East Kentucky on the hill, we had all the brickyarders that worked in the brickyards and the clay mines and the coal mines lived on that hill. It's kinda of like Sand Mountain, Alabama, it's a big hill and hundreds of families lived up there. Big. Right. They had about a mile and a half around that hill. To the main road down the foot of the hill. So a lot of a lot of families up there. And most of them walked to work because their work was at the foot of the hill. Brickyards from all the foot of the hill. They walked down the foot of the hill, work, walk back home, take their lunch with them, walk back home. Uh, when the ship would change it here, that old whistle blowing ship would change here, the whole line of men walking up that hill. Old white dust all over them, carrying an old empty dinner bucket, headed for home, wore plum out. I remember many of them, I watched them come up that hill. So, you, you know, you, now you have to drive 20 miles to work, some of them. Yeah. Don't you? I drove about 18, 20 miles to Ford, Mayor in Oldham County for, well, I, I retired after I moved out here, but I drove that for 25 years out there, lived out there, and drove, and drove to Ford. So, uh, you know, I, it'd been hard to walk every morning. <laughs> I wouldn't even try it. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't try it at all. But what about a Christian? Don't you think it's, it's got to be awfully hard for somebody to pretend like they're saved? Mm -hmm. Amen. And go to church, we really don't feel anything. And sit back there and preach, I'll have God all over, and then sit there and they can get the thing from it. Right. Mm -hmm. And they can shut it out, too. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't get anything. You know? A lot of preachers don't give me anything, either. <laughs> but they don't get anything. Now, without Christ, you ain't going to do anything. You can't learn without the Lord. Right. The Bible says you need that no man teach you, but the anointing you have teaching you all things. That's it, bro. That's the Holy Ghost. You're anointing. The unction, the function with it. That's, a, that's Jesus. That's the Spirit of Christ. Yeah. Which Paul said, if any man not have man, not have you none of his. Right. So what we're looking at here is the means to move for the Lord. Amen. We get nowhere without the power of Christ in us. Mm -hmm. We're looking at anything done. That's hard all of us. We've got to go to the grocery store, go to the grocery you know, take kids to school, maybe, or whatever you do, all your running. But how'd you like to do that walking? <laughs> they walked down home at me, and I'm telling you, my wife will tell you, my grandpa never could drive, never owned a car. Mm -hmm. He walked all the hill, which was a mile and a half away, down the railroad tracks. That was the way we went. It was our freeway in that day and time, mm -hmm. uh, the railroad. And we'd walk the railroad down to downtown and walk and get to a box and we'd come back. I remember Daddy taking me and Gary down to the old poultry house. Yeah, a poultry house. Y'all remember these things back in 1951, 52. I mean, poultry house right on the railroad. You go run by geese, you buy chickens or anything. And nobody had a freezer to put their stuff in. Smoke houses, softened everything down. And Dad said, Come on, boys, I'm going to get us a hen for, uh, for dinner tomorrow. They'd be on Saturday. We'd go down and watch that matinee, Johnny Mac Brown and uh, Alan Rocky Lane, all the way back then. And the old theater. And we'd walk over there and he'd get a buy a hen. They tied feathers back here. We'd go with that big hen. Uh, boy, my own hat. Oh, that big hen swaying back and forth. <laughs> Didn't think a thing about it. Mm -mm. If you'd see that today, you'd laugh your head off. Look at that. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Hey, we didn't have nothing else to do. We didn't have anything against the We had to use our feet and our legs. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is you're not going to get anywhere without the Lord. Right. right. Amen, brother. You have got to have the Lord. Number one, you got to have the Lord to go to heaven. Yeah. You are as if you don't have the Lord, you are as lost as you can be tonight. Right. I don't know, I don't, well, I'll be honest with you. If you're not coming, if you're lost and you're not coming to church, get saved. I don't know why you come. Think about that. I never think I want people to beat my brains out with preaching. <laughs> I, I can get me a girlfriend somewhere else and go to church and get her. 
I was lost. Amen. I was lost. I went in one moment to Goody Two Shoes, Goody Two Shoes uh, girlfriend. I didn't. I really didn't. I was lost. What does she expect out of a lost person? Right. I got saved. That shit off of me like mm. water off a duck's back. Yeah. So God took it on. Amen. Now every step I take, I take it to the Lord. Amen. Everywhere I go, I pray before I leave the house. Before I get on the road. Amen. Pray twice a day for you and my family. Every morning, before daylight, and every night, before bedtime. I pray. Pray during the afternoon for a study or anything. Pray while I'm studying. My God, God is in you. You need you live in him. You live for him. You walk with him. Everything you do, you look for him. Amen. That's what Paul's trying to tell us about here. Mm -hmm. You probably got a hard time doing it, too. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Just like, uh, how's the church going? How are we going to go to that meeting up in uh, Goshen, Ohio? That's about a two-hour drive from here without that man up there. Oh, without a car. Huh? Take off and walk. He might get turned next week sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> My God, we go a long ways to fellowships. Two and three hours sometimes, three and a half hours. We take that man and go all, we go, we have went over 2,000 miles, haven't we, Travis? That's all, Bozeman, Montana, 200 miles from California land. We've been all over the West and the, and the other man, World War One, well, it, it was in good shape. We traded, we got a new van here four and a half years ago, I think it was. We, we got it paid for now. And we drive, we drive in it on our, our ministry out west. We have a ministry out west. Been sec this is the 18th year coming up, 18 years. We've had that ministry. We've been all over the West, some places, three or four times. We had to have a van. We got to have something to motivate us, to move us. Right. That's why you've got to have the Spirit of Christ in you. That's a good reason why not many do much for the Lord. They don't have the motivation in there. They don't have the unction, the anointing of God. Yeah, man. That's it, brother. Think about it. If it's in you, buddy, you're going to be different. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a desire to do for him. Amen. Psalm 62, verse 11. I'm just about through. Psalm 62, verse 11 says, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Now, it's just, just like you get a chainsaw. How many of y'all ever use a chainsaw? Well, I've used them plenty of times. I cut my own wood, split it for 38, 37 years. Cut it off. I, 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 I split it and used at least 10 ricks or more every year. Every year. I did that to my house burn every year. I use a chainsaw and axe and a ball. I had no ball did all right now, but I haven't used one long time. But this is a chainsaw in the hands of someone who can use it. So are we in the hands of Christ, our Savior? Mm -hmm. A chainsaw is a tool. You are a tool. Right. You're a tool of the Lord. He uses you as tools. He's the workman. We're the tool. He hammers things out with yard tongues. Everything we do uh, pertaining to God and this God is behind it or it won't get done. Amen. That's right. Am I right? Yes. Amen. What well, if I come in one day and say, so, honey, you're going to cut your wood. I'm going to let that chainsaw just take care of itself this year. <laughs> I think I'll just let that chainsaw, I'm going to pull, pull the goat to and just turn it loose and let it cut the wood. And I'm going to put that big maul in its hand and let that maul do it, set maul, take care of itself. That's the way a lot of people do. They can't be used of God. They're not being used of God. You think God saved you just to lay up like a little chainsaw or a little axe mm -hmm. and nobody's used any longer? Just there. Just there. Not really being used, but just there. Mm -hmm. Think of that. That's what they were having here in Corinth. A lot of churches there had that same thing. Amen. Luke 1 37 said, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Mm -hmm. Anything we set our little hearts to do for the Lord, He'll, he'll enable us to do it. He will. He'll see to it that it's done. Luke 1 37 it said, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. I believe that. I do. Let me tell you what I told the men back there before we prayed back there this evening. Uh, this past, uh, well, last week we went up there, Tom's and Brenda Walker's. Mm -hmm. And they said they took they'd already they'd already come to grips when she was dying. Mm -hmm. And then they had hospice come in, the hospice wife said, uh, she ain't ready to die. While I was up there, she said, I want you to do my funeral. I said, Well, I'd be glad to do your funeral, Brenda. I said, Thank God, let's don't bury it. This is this quick. I said, You gotta die first. 
I said, you might not die. You might outlive me. Right. Right. Well, can I right. live me? Sure, that's right. I said, let's wait. Now, let's pray and tell, ask God to help us. So that prayer was, and I prayed like I've never prayed before, but I said, Lord, I said, you said the last enemy to be destroyed is death. I said, I take it then that's our enemy and that's your enemy because you call it an enemy. Right. If it's an enemy of ours, it's an enemy of yours. Mm -hmm. I said, and I know there's nothing too big, no enemy too big that you can't wallow under. That's right. And that's you can't overwhelm and hold down. Amen. I said, how about attacking our enemy first tonight, today and, and concerning the Betty and concerning Brenda Wampler and concerning my sister Sue who we left her Sunday night and got home they thought she was going to die. Had double pneumonia. Sick, had to rest in the hospital, my old sister. And I said, how about wrestling death to a ground and holy him there? Keep him off of us. Keep him away from us for a while. That's not too big a prayer and praise the Lord. You're nothing too big for you to handle. But he took her, what was that, today or yesterday? They put her in a hospital, and the doctors that had seen her told, them, told her what they could do. Mm. And she, and she said, well, I'd just like to prolong and get a few more days. He said, I ain't talking about days. I'm talking about years, woman. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about years you're going to live. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that's God, don't you? Yes. I really believe that's God. Oh, yeah. My sister, we prayed for her. We hit, we got hit, we hit the throne as soon as they called us and told us to begin to pray for her. So even I did, I know the rest of you did too. And you know what? I called the, to call the hospital and talk to her. And I said, do you want to hospital? I said, no. She said, I'll come back home uh, t today. That was yesterday. I went, I'll come back home. I said, you that way? She said, yeah. She said, I'm, I'm pretty good, Jay. Mm -hmm. Hey, I believe that's prayer. Mm -hmm. You have not because you ask not. That's right. Now, I think another thing, a lot of people ask, but they deliver to God. And, you know, here's your scripture on that. He said, we know that whatsoever we ask of him, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Amen. You can't do your own thing and not be pleasing to the Lord. In fact, get anything from the Lord, you'll not get anything right. from the Lord. Tell you. Tell you. So old Paul, but he said, I'm going to be easy with you this time. <laughs> when he got harder on land than what I've got on you tonight. But you, amen. I'm, see, in the Lord, we can do what the world can't do. For you and I can talk to the Savior because we, you and I, have a divine behavior.